Sometimes, accelerated learning requires serious acceleration. The course is designed to kill you. So here it goes. I'm 50% excited and 50% totally scared. Five days, got a premature accelerator here. Zero experience, and I'm terrified of it. I do not claim to be a good driver and the world's best teacher. Stop, go left! Oh, oh, aha! One mistake and you and your car are toast. I'm Tim Ferriss, best-selling author and human guinea pig. I'll show you how to make the impossible possible by bending the rules. I'll find the world's best teachers and push myself to the edge to deconstruct, decode, and demystify some of the world's toughest challenges in record time. If I can do it, so can you. This week's experiment is rally racing. Why rally racing? And why not rally racing? For one, it's highly technical and it requires adaptability, meaning I can't just memorize a course and drive through it. I need to really learn the essential principles to be able to do it all. That's my kind of learning. And two, because it scares the hell out of me. And what we fear doing most is usually what we most need to do. I'm nervous as hell because my aunt was paralyzed in a car accident, and I've been in some gnarly car crashes before. I do not claim to be a good driver, so it's terrifying to me. I have four days to train here at Timo Neal Rally School in Dalton, New Hampshire. My goal is to learn all the skills that I need to compete in a rally race at the end of training. That should also help me handle practically any driving condition back in normal life. I brought my friend Chris, AKA the Kiwi along. We'll be learning side by side and competing on the course at the end of the week. The risk of losing to him is an incredible motivator. We're very competitive as men. And the truth is he's a better driver than I am. My dream, or maybe fantasy, is to outscore him by the end of the week. Ah, Tim, welcome to Dalton. Nice, nice pleasure to, see to you. meet you. Yeah? Kiwi, nice Kiwi. to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. I am very excited to train with Tim O'Neill. He's known for his out-of-the-box teaching methods and his astronomical success rate. Two things I look for in a world-class instructor. Maybe we can give you a ride in the rally car. I think it'd be a good idea for you to kind of see it firsthand before we start. I'd love to do that. A competition rally car is very different from a normal car. Not only is the handbrake and the shifter in a different place, it's hard to get into. Remember, you go in left leg and head first. And you really have to use a technique to just get into the seat because of the roll cage. And then, of course, you have the harnesses. And then you have the intercom system where you have to jack your helmet Perfect. into the electronics so you can actually speak over the noise of the car. <laughs> my first real experience inside a rally car. It's different from most types of motor racing because it uses street legal cars on off-road courses. The whole point is to push the limits on unfamiliar terrain and to be ready for anything. It may look like Tim is just moving the wheel back and forth, but he's actually doing many things at once, both mental and physical. He's constantly evaluating the road ahead for turns, obstructions, terrain, and visibility then calculating which of a dozen maneuvers he should use to get around the next bend. Every maneuver is exceptionally technical. He's doing all of this at 50 plus miles an hour on a road that's only eight feet wide in some places. Oh, you can say you get into the cheese and your toast. Even the slightest miscalculation could send us flying into a tree or a rock. How was that, mate? That was full on. Got some air, went sideways. <laughs> we teach you crawl, walk, run. So you learn the basics of one maneuver. And once you've mastered that, we add another maneuver. And plus, we want to break you of your bad habits. Listening to Tim, I'm really excited to see how his teaching tactics mirror my best practices for accelerated learning. He's already done the hardest part for me deconstructed rally racing into four components. Learning the braking maneuvers, the braking, trail braking, pendulum turn, understanding enough about cars so you don't brake it, understanding enough about rally navigation so you drive with what you hear, 
And then the fourth element is making sure you have your lucky pin and that you're on your game and everything is together so you can be 100%. All right, let's get on it. There is zero margin for error with this stuff. My buddy Kiwi and I are all pumped up to get behind the wheel of a rally car, but first we need some time in the classroom. <laughs> Hey, fellas, uh, Tim and Chris, I want you to meet Travis Hansen. He's our lead Travis, instructor. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. If anyone's going to prep me for my first time behind the wheel, I'm glad it's Travis. That's what makes Rally unique is the fact that we drive on real roads. There's real trees. There's real rocks. The Rally, we say, is, is one of the only forms of motorsports where the course is designed to kill you. <laughs> Knowing that, it's no surprise that these guys put a ton of emphasis on braking. And the way they want us to do it contradicts one of the most fundamental driving habits we all have. At Team O'Neill, we want to learn kind of the left foot braking technique. You can reduce your reaction time by about half a second. We also learned that in rally racing, you actually use the brakes to steer the car. You guys ready to go give it a shot? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Cool. Travis starts out by demonstrating on a big gravel skid pad. It's the first place we train, so if we screw up, we won't hit anything. Times. Then it's our turn. Usually because I'm a cheater, I have Chris the Kiwi do it first because I, of course, want to see him make mistakes before <laughs> I make them. Get your left foot ready onto the brake pedal. I don't like it over there. There you go. That's better. There you go. Nice. I'm happy for the guy, but it's pretty annoying that Chris is so nice. damn good at this. Yeah. You're a natural already. Yeah. How's it, again. how's it like driving on the right side? Weird. Here is where the fear kicks in. <sighs> okay. All right. So up into second gear, get some speed. I'm competitive, very competitive, but I have to keep safety in my mind as the number one most important thing. Don't turn, just use the brake pedal to make the car turn. Pretty soon, just focusing on technique gets me out of my head. Oh, ease off the brakes, get some speed again, and then go back to it. There it is, nice. Now what we learned in the classroom is really starting to gel. In rally racing, you're really steering a car, as they pointed out, a lot like a boat or a plane. You're actually turning the steering wheel ever so slightly and then applying the brakes to cause a skid. That is fun. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Braking. How I love the, let me count the ways. 10, 11, 12 different types of braking maneuvers. But we have braking in the turn, where you're using this type of drag to bring you around the corner. We have pendulum braking, which is super cool, one of my favorites. It's also nicknamed the Scandinavian flick, and that's where you initiate a very slight slide in one direction, so you get this whiplash motion that then brings the tail around quickly in the other direction. Right, you're trying to make a 90 degree left hand turn at 40 miles an hour in the mud. You're gonna lift, turn, brake, release the brake, turn back, count a steer. There's like 11 things to do in like two seconds. Right. Turn, brake, turn and brake, release the brake, turn back. In addition to left foot braking, I'm having a tough time getting used to another footwork technique. You're keeping the accelerator down. So you're not accelerating, then taking off the accelerator, applying the brake, and alternating back and forth. You're keeping the gas down and then only modulating the brake to keep the car in turn. It's very counterintuitive. Turn in, brake, release the brake. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let's do one more. Turn, and then brake, release the brake. Oh, -ho! nice. But you still have massive power. So. That was good, that felt pretty good. I, killed, I only killed one. I'm still struggling with all the things I need to remember simply to make a turn on the skid pad. And tomorrow, we graduate to the road course. I'm terrified. There is zero margin for error with this stuff. And if you're off target with something like this, and you slide accidentally two and a half feet in the wrong direction, you are toast. I need my sleep. Signing off. I really knew it wasn't going to end well. Turn, oh, oh, ah, ooh, ah, whoa, -ho. 
I'm deep into my rally racing training at Team O'Neill Rally School. So far, Tim's teaching methods are exactly in sync with my own approach to accelerated learning. There's just one thing that I want to tweak. What I'm trying to do today is politely disobey my instructors. Start it early. Wrong side. I don't want to only learn my skills in a specific order. So slalom this way, slalom that way, trail break. Because then it becomes fixed in my mind in that order. Just like trying to recite the alphabet. If I say, what's the seventh letter in the alphabet? You have to go through the alphabet to get to number seven. And if I only learn these skills in one specific order, well, I'm going to screw up. I need random access memory. I need to use any technique at any time. Oh, rally man. <laughs> I hope my ram is on point because it's time to leave the safe, warm, and fuzzy skid pad for the much more dangerous road. It's a huge step, but it does come with a very nice technology upgrade. This guy? Yeah, so we got a new car here. Our new wheels come with a roll cage, different brakes, and much better tires. All right, give it a shot. All right, so I'm going to take the super slow. One of the four pillars of rally racing is co-driving or navigating. You need someone with a map next to you telling you what's coming so you can respond to what you hear. In order to be able to safely go flat out on a road, you need to drive with what you hear, not with what you see. So if you get off your notes, you're going to go visual. And when you go visual on a rally, two out of 10 corners are going to take you out because they're tighter than they appear. Right two into a left four, over the crest, in rally speak, R and L refer to right and left, while the number is the sharpness of the turn, one being a hairpin and six being nearly a straightaway. And it just gets more confusing from there. What are the most common mistakes in competition? Are there any? Uh, on the back page, the most common rally mistakes. Between Chris and me, we pretty much have all 19 of the most common rally mistakes covered, the most hilarious of which is Chris's main issue. This is the biggest thing I have what we call a premature accelerator. <laughs> we got a premature accelerator here. It's not his fault, it's his genetics. Chris has a tendency to drop the hammer on the accelerator when it's not appropriate. I have the tendency to lift off the accelerator when I freak out. Brake, brake, stay on the gas, flip, flip, stay on the gas. Which then sends me into a tailspin. What the hell? Don't hit the rocks. I have the tendency to uh, hold the brakes too long. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Chris does the opposite. Stop, go left! Stop, oh. oh, we're done. There are people, like me, who are target fixators. The natural human tendency is for people to look at things they don't want to hit. You want to look where you want that tire. If you don't want to look at the corner you're trying to go around, you need to look at your exit point. That's true for skiing, mountain biking, definitely true for rally car racing. All right, go for it. What Tim O'Neill calls emotional driving is my biggest problem of all especially now that we've moved from the skid pad to the woods. There are many more variables out here, gradient changes, different type of surfaces, and so on. Careful adding in too much steering over this crest. Not to mention the fact that I have to calculate everything I need to do to navigate every course element. It's a lot to think about at once. I'm afraid I'll freeze and make a huge mistake. And then, of course, that's exactly what I do. I really knew it wasn't going to end well. I knew it wasn't going to end well because under pressure, without sight, I knew my instincts would steer me the wrong direction. I tried to avoid the ditch, which of course put me on track to smash right into a tree, slammed on the brakes, which I shouldn't have done, and spun around. And as I saw the world rotating outside of the car, I thought the car was going to flip. Spinner into the ditch. So right on that corner, where I have to come close because we're trying to avoid that tree, looking into that corner is right into that, is the sun. So I got all screwed up and then lost control. So we need to get the car out of the ditch. Not only was it terrifying when it happened, but it made me anxious and very afraid as I continued practicing for the rest of the day. Okay, you are stuck in a ditch. Yeah, please call uh, Timo's team to get someone to pull us out of the ditch, please. And so we uh, hailed some camera guys, and uh, we all got together to get this thing out of the side of the road. The big race 
coming up tomorrow. This is gonna be our first little corner here, first left-hander. It's gonna be pretty hard. I've hit that one. You can see the bark right there. It's got some red paint on it. <laughs> This is yours right yeah, there. That's a piece of me. The best way for me to avoid crashing tomorrow is by practicing each maneuver correctly as many times as possible. Brakes. Off the brakes now. Nice. And nice. I'm also going to slow the hell down because this competition tomorrow is not for time. It's a point system based on how well each maneuver is executed. So I need to work on not having a fear response, which comes back to his rules. Do not drive emotionally. How do you do that? TBD. It's finally here, the big day, the big race, and I'm 50% excited and 50% totally scared. That corner. All right, fellas. Timo! We're about to go hot, and because we're going hot, we're going to give you some fireproof suits. We're gonna grade you on your performance. It's finally game time. Huey and I will be racing on a track that's just over two miles long, and for every braking maneuver, every turn, we'll be graded on a 10-point system. The key is to not overthink it. Instead, just think about your line, and then adjust for the conditions. And if we can do that, we'll go through the course a lot faster than either of us are probably ready to. <laughs> do I want to beat this guy? Hell yeah. But to finish first, you have to first finish, and I have to remember that. Tightens over crest. Tightens over crest, yeah. Do a little pendulum action here. So I've been nailing the pendulum every practice run, and I just botched it. Totally screwed the pooch. Chris had some beautiful pendulums out of nowhere because he'd been making mistakes on them. I actually am very disappointed in myself. And I don't want to be robbed of that because I think it is something that makes me strive to be better. Woo! Wow, Great good run, good. Timmy. Thanks, buddy. Well done, man. Thanks, bro. All right, fellas, we've totaled up the score. And uh, Tim, you've done really well. You got an 83 for the whole run. I didn't score you as well on the crest. The pendulum turn, not quite done. So you got some sevens there. So 83. And Chris, you got an 87. Ooh. You are the winner. Congratulations. Objectively, I made a huge amount of progress uh, from start to finish. And just the fact that I was out there among the trees and rocks in that car and got from point A to point B is actually a big thing for me. I'm very phobic of driving. Even when I'm home in San Francisco, I hate driving, or I hated driving. And I'm much more comfortable with all of it now. So looking at the big, big, big picture, I certainly think that is a success. You both are ready for a rally. So if you wanted to ever do a rally, I'd ride with you. The miracle is this guy today closed out a non-sealed road only 10% slower than a, an American champion rally driver. Six days later, the Kiwi entered his first real rally race, and he finished second overall, and all the other competitors had 10 plus races under their belts. To that, I say, kia kaha, brother. Go, Kiwi, go. I'll be back. I'll come back. I don't like being second place. He always takes it so fast. <laughs> I think with the right focus, He'll do something with his life. You know, he just needs to apply himself more, maybe work more than four hours a week. Just try to get it done, you know? Enough time.
Hey guys, Tim Ferriss here. One of the things that kills me about TV is that you have to take all of this amazing footage. In our case, we had five to six days of 12 to 16 hours typically per day, and you have to chop it down to 21 or 22 minutes, which is a 30 minute show with the ads removed. It just makes me want to stab myself in the eyeballs with bicycle spokes. It's so agonizing. The good news is we have all that footage, and so we've taken huge extended scenes, we've taken interviews, we've taken tutorials, everything imaginable that we could get our hands on that we thought was really world-class that we wanted to put in. And you can find it at fourhourworkweek.com forward slash TV, all spelled out, F-O-U-R, etc. And we really feel like we could have made the best two-hour documentary imaginable on the subject that you just saw, or had five different shows of equal quality, all different with the footage that we captured. So please check it out. There's some amazing stuff. And you can also check out the podcast where I do very long, in some cases, two to three hour interviews with a lot of the experts in this show. And that's the Tim Ferriss Show, which was nominated one of the best of iTunes, which I'm very, very happy about. And uh, you can check out both. So find everything at fourhourworkweek.com forward slash TV. And if you think that's an oxymoron, by the way, you're right. If you want a four hour work week, do not work in television. Thank you for watching.